This is my Q&A video for the second trailer that I was supposed to get out on Friday. I am so sorry, live chat people. I really fucked up. I will make it up to you. Warning, there are spoilers in this video as well. I will be using some of the leaks and talking about my opinions based on them. So if you're trying to stay spoiler free, please avoid this video. Also, also, not all these are questions. Some of them are actually statements that I just responded to. I didn't want you to think I was being a fibber. But first giveaway, I'm so sorry my live chat people, I need to make this up to you. I said Friday, but I got way too consumed with Con of Thrones things, so again, I, I owe you something and I will make it up to you. But I am going to Con of Thrones this week, Friday through Sunday, and I have a free ticket for one lucky winner. To enter the giveaway, all you have to do is like this video and answer this question in the comment section below. Who is the lone wolf Sansa refers to in the trailer? First question, Diego asked, is Jamie walking in Highgarden in one of the first takes? Yeah, he most likely is in that shot. I pointed out that there is a dead man that looks to be wearing an outfit that you'd expect to see in the Reach, and his walk is definitely that of a soldier or someone in war mode. I personally believe he's walking to see the Queen of Thorns, who has already returned home. She's really old, so she's not going to be hanging out with Daenerys, nor is she going to be on the battlefields. And with her sharp tongue, I can see Daenerys going, Yeah, you want to just hang out at home and, you know, I'll catch you later? Cool. Andrew says, Bran was standing next to the maester that was at Winterfell for the Boltons. You are thinking of Maester Walken, that sexy fellow. So I personally think it could be one of two people. Either a Maester, perhaps Maester Walken, as he was spotted on set. It would make sense that Maester would be with him, especially after giving him a super spiffy new wheelchair. However, the weight and the hairline don't exactly match to what I've seen from the actor in the past, nor does the back of the ear, but one, people change and hairlines can fluctuate with aging men. So can your ears. And honestly, the maester there would make the most sense. However, my tinfoil theory is it's actually the three-eyed raven. The back of the ear matches and the slimmer look as well. Since time isn't linear for those with the three-eyed raven's power, he could absolutely still be there to guide Bran and help him utilize his powers. When you have those abilities, dead isn't really dead. And his physical form may be lost, but that doesn't make him not there anymore. So, a bit tinfoily, but I'd prefer the Three-Eyed Raven to be around this season in some capacity. However, from all the messages I've been getting, I think every channel basically probably said that, oh, this is Maester Walken, so now we're all on the bandwagon, and no matter what I say, I'm going to be wrong, and it's going to be the Maester. So I guess I'll end this one with, uh, yeah, it's totally the Maester. Completely, 100% confirmed. Uh, woot woot, all aboard. Uh, the Maester Train. Jordana asks, where do you think Kyburn's storyline is heading? Could he be the important thing Cersei loses in your theory? Side note, do you think that Kyburn enjoyed his Gregor-related experiments even more since the mountain put him to the sword at Harrenhal? It's never really been acknowledged and probably doesn't matter at this point, but it's a semi-interesting detail. I think Kyburn is going to be hanging out with Cersei at King's Landing, so he's going to be relatively safe He's not the type of hand that you're going to send to battles or to be in control of armies like other hands we've seen, so he's he's going to be staying put at King's Landing. The only way I can see Kyburn dying this season is if the residents of King's Landing decide they don't want their incestual queen anymore. Or maybe if Daenerys starts kicking ass and the small folk of the city get fearful or just want Danny to take over. Then we could see one of those riots the city just loves to fucking have. And maybe during it, Kyburn gets killed. However, I don't see him dying this season, personally. Although, let me don my tinfoil, part of me hopes that Varys gets control of his little birds again, or it comes out that he's always been in control of them, and he uses them to do a little stabby stabby time of the Hand of the Queen. I really like my stabby stabby time. As for Kyburn enjoying the Gregor experiments, that's a fabulous question, and no one has asked me that before, so thank you so much. I always imagine Kyburn as this person that enjoyed experimentation because he is a scientist, just with poor ethics. 
So he doesn't enjoy hurting people or getting revenge, but simply enjoys learning and conducting his passion. So I don't think he necessarily gets too much pleasure from it, or that's how I read him in the books and the show. He's just a man, a scientist with twisted morals and ethics who really enjoys learning. He's very curious, but he really doesn't give a shit how he goes about it. And we've seen people like that in our own history, so it wouldn't be too much of a stretch to imagine he's a similar type person. Next I was asked, is it only me that thinks John has some superpower based on the last shot of the trailer, the way he slashed the white like nothing? I just think Kit keeps getting better and better at swordplay and we see an improvement every season, but if you want to think about it in another way, Jon Snow has been fighting a lot, so he's getting a lot more experience and eventually he's going to level up and be able to kill the enemies a lot easier. Plus, I think here Jon is a little agitated. He has to go beyond the wall to prove to some crazy women that the others are a threat. So he's on a mission and trying to get through it as quickly as possible so he can go back behind the wall and prepare with the queens how they're going to deal with this threat. Does anyone ever talk about House Tully? With House Frey decapitated and House Lannister spread out, Edmure Tully can reclaim some serious independence. Well, I personally have said this, I can see Arya killing some more male Freys, releasing Edmure, and then him restoring the Riverlands to the Tullys. I would imagine it will be mostly off screen and we may just hear about it. I don't think you hear about the Tullys a lot because they aren't a major player right now and there are so many other, way more exciting things going on. Colin asks, I was wondering if you think John and Danny may have a battle of words this year about their families, as Danny's father did kind of burn and strangle Ned's father and brother. I think that may be an interesting exchange to keep Danny from becoming the Mad Queen. Any thoughts? And thank you for wishing me to have fun at Con of Thrones. I hope they do, but I can see John not going there. He's trying to be diplomatic with this woman. He's trying to get her on his side to help him fight a battle. So going to this lady and saying, hey, you crazy bitch, your crazy asshole father burned my grandfather alive and caused my uncle to strangle himself wouldn't be very diplomatic. It wouldn't be a good icebreaker. Now I can see John telling his plans to Sansa and Sansa saying that, hey, John. Uh, you remember those stories where the Mad King killed uh, a couple Starks and then wanted our father dead? Yeah. You remember that dude that kidnapped our aunt and raped her to death? Yeah. Uh, she's related to those people, you fucking idiot. Nosekill said, Not only is Varys a Merlin, but Elsa from Frozen is the Night's Queen. I'm gonna say this as calmly as a ginger can, you little fucker. If you ruin any more plot points for season 7 for me, Extraordinary, aww, uh -huh, that's a super sad username, wrote, If Danny, John, and Cersei and Jaime die, would Tyrion become king? I mean, I guess it depends when they died. If they died before the others were defeated, then no, the Night King is going to be on his throne, whatever he decides that is, and he's going to be controlling Westeros and then eventually Essos with his undead army. Now, if they died after the Night King was destroyed, then I don't see Tyrion sitting the throne. I actually see the Seven Kingdoms going back to how it was before Aegon I started to unite them, which was a clusterfuck of little territories controlled by petty kings and petty lords. Joseph speculates, You think Cersei kept her hair short so she feel close to being a man? You know, I could see that. She does have issues with being a woman and thinking if she were a man, she'd have much more power and respect. And her hair should be a little bit longer, by this time in season seven, so I can see her actually cutting it and maintaining it that length as a sort of power haircut. Pitar revealed, if you pause the trailer at one minute and 22 seconds after the shot of Tyrion, there's a shot of the Hound drawing his sword in the dragon pit. 100% Clegane Bull confirmed. <sighs> That's been confirmed for years. <laughs> Paul wrote, what if Euron hatches a plan to get close to Cersei and ends up killing her as a present to Danny? I see Euron more playing Cersei, trying to marry her and then murdering her and thinking he can take the throne then. I don't really see him teaming up with Danny, but I like where your thought is because I feel like betrayal is the best gift you can give someone. Do you think the opening shot is Sansa walking away after kissing Jon? Go put your nose in the corner and don't take it out until I tell you to do so. Why does Arya look shocked in the trailer? 
This could be her seeing Winterfell again for the first time in a long time, and it has changed a little. It had a fire, multiple fights fought around it and in it. It may shock her to see it looking how it does. Or perhaps she comes across the Brotherhood without banners and sees the Hound. That would definitely shock her. Who is Jon talking to about the centuries our families fought together? He could be talking to the Northern Lords, I think that's the best bet. I mentioned for the HBO Spain trailer, Jon could be trying to unite the Northern Lords that aren't happy with each other for siding with the Boltons or not immediately helping Jon, and so on. I can even see Lyanna getting a little feisty with House Umber for turning over Rickon. The only thing that would make me think he wasn't referring to the Northern Lords is centuries is a fraction of the time they've all been working together. We're talking thousands of years with the Northern families. Even if we look at the last house the Starks defeated, that's still two to 6,000 years ago, and that house is now extinct. Century sounds more like Targaryens since they were only in control for a little under 300 years, so he could be talking to Danny. However, the Northern Lord still makes the most sense. Lastly, I was asked to talk about my last hero theory, which I've had for, oh God, a couple months now. I've been trying to get that video out. I'm really sorry. I've just been occupied with other things. I swear I will eventually get that fucking last hero video out. Maybe. Don't hold me to that, please. All right, so I tried to get to as many comments as possible. Thank you so much for commenting on my live chat review of the second trailer. Please like the video, subscribe, and do the giveaway because I'm going to announce the winner probably in like a day and a half. I know this is so last minute because of the cons this week. I'm a fuck up. Everyone knows I'm a fuck up. Just accept my fucked up-ness. I love you. Goodbye.